It's hard to believe that an entire liturgical year has come and gone. I mean, the new year, the new liturgical year, is just a couple of weeks away. And you hear all these things that people say about new year, new me, but I would argue that if you don't stop and look at what worked this year, or what didn't work this year, and what you're going to do different, then you are doomed to repeat the same year. Stick around today, because we're going to figure out how to make this new liturgical year the most fruitful that it could possibly be. Greetings, listeners of the Latin Prayer Podcast, and welcome back for another episode. Your dedication to this podcast, and of course, praying the rosary daily, is truly appreciated. As we delve into today's content, I encourage you to check out the show notes for the daily rosary links, and please share this podcast with your friends and family. Remember that Pope St. Pius X once said that if there were one million families praying the rosary every day, the entire world would be saved. Together, we can play our part in making that a reality. I value your input, so please feel free to share any questions or suggestions for future episodes via email at latinprayerpodcast at gmail.com. Your engagement matters immensely to me, whether you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. Hitting the like button, leaving a comment, it's the easiest free way for you to support this podcast. Now, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel and help us to grow the Latin Prayer Podcast YouTube channel. If you haven't also already, please check out the Latin Prayer Podcast Patreon community. It is my goal to produce a higher caliber content on a more full-time basis. I cannot do this without your help. By becoming a patron, you can play a pivotal role in taking the Latin Prayer Podcast to new heights and shaping its future. We have four tiers that we've crafted, each offering a unique benefit tailored to enhance your experience with more benefits to come. Your support directly contributes to the creation of meaningful content, and you have my promise to continue to improve your Patreon and podcast experience. Together, I believe we can spread the beauty of traditional Latin prayers and customs of the Catholic Church. So I thank you again for tuning in. Now let's get started with today's episode. First things first, who is this episode really for? It doesn't matter whether you're a single layperson listening to this, whether you are a parent or a grandparent, or whether you are a religious or a priest. I know there are a few that do listen to this podcast. I want to stop and take some of the life lessons I've learned from running a business and goal setting in business and applying that specifically to our liturgical year. All of this applies because we are the same. We're human beings. We're human beings living in the temporal world. We move through time. And therefore, if we analyze how we have moved, and we pay attention to, like I mentioned in the intro, what has worked, what didn't work, and what we're going to do different, we can strategically place ourselves in a better position going forward. Why wouldn't these principles that work in other arenas, such as business, such as sports, why wouldn't they work if applied to our spiritual life? Of course they would work, because again, we're human beings. We're designed the same way. We just happen to play in different arenas. So if you've never viewed your life this way before, I would invite you to start looking at your life not from January 1st, meaning the beginning of the secular new year, but begin to analyze and look at your life from the lens or the viewpoint of the liturgical year, which begins at Advent. This year, the first Sunday of Advent is December the 3rd. That means we have a little less than three weeks in order to prepare ourselves for this new year. I want to zoom out for a second and look at how people generally prepare themselves for the new secular year. Leave the liturgical new year alone just for a minute. What do most people do? Well, truth be told, the vast majority of people don't do anything to prepare for the new year. They have good thoughts or good intentions to make themselves anew, but it goes not much further than having good thoughts or intentions. I'm going to repeat this phrase 
multiple times during this episode. Where performance is measured, performance is improved. Most people aren't actually serious about self-improvement, and so they don't put any effort in improving themselves. They kind of expect that if they've set the intention, sort of this ethereal thought that stays in the air and they maybe think about it from time to time, that it'll just happen, it'll just manifest itself. And that's not the way that life works. If you look at anything that you have done, that you have accomplished in an almost magnanimous fashion, this could be anything. You did really well on a test. You got a promotion that you were looking forward to, or you wrote a book, or anything. It could be anything. You will know that you succeeded because you made the decision first to accomplish that goal, and then you were willing to back up that decision with grit and perseverance and endurance and all of the other virtues that lend towards making that a reality. And that's just how winning is done. So like I said, most people are not willing to make the decision and then back it up with work, genuine work, until a deadline is reached. Perhaps a small group of people will sit down December 31st with a notepad and a pen, and they'll jot down a few things that they want to have happen that's different in the coming year. And it might be they want to spend less time on their phone, more time with their kids. They want to eat healthier, and they want to work out more. They'll write down a whole bunch of things that, again, are good things. But very rarely will people set spiritual goals. And I want to talk specifically to Catholic people here. Goal setting is what we are supposed to do, and we begin with the end in mind, which is our eternal destination. Now, I started running a business when I was 19 years old, and for the last 17 years, I've worked on goal setting year after year. And one of my favorite things to do, particularly in the realm of goal setting, was to get a head start on everybody else, and the most important person that I wanted to get a head start on was myself. So while everybody else would agree that the norm in goal setting would be to set your goals on December 31st, before January 1st, I always began my goal setting around Advent, or just prior to Advent. It gave me almost an entire month and a half of a head start on everybody else, but it gave me a head start on myself. And let me clarify here. Let's again just keep in the realm of secular goals, okay? I wanted to improve in four specific areas. My spiritual life, my relationship with God, my family life, my relationship with my loved ones, my business and career life, my relationship to my neighbors, the people that I did business with, and then my health, mental and physical, so my relationship to myself. I wanted to set very clear goals for all four of those areas, and I didn't want to figure those things out or begin to figure those things out on January 1st or December 31st. I wanted, and I'm going to be very clear here, listen to me, here's what I wanted. By the time that the 1st of January came around, I had been testing, fine-tuning, and running this new version of me already. I had figured out what was working, what wasn't working, what I liked, what I didn't like, what needed to get changed. I was doing all of that for a month and a half so that I was running at full speed January 1st. I was operating at peak performance because I had a whole month and a half to practice and fine tune and figure it out. I wasn't going to waste any time trying to do all of these things or figure these things out January 1st. The beautiful part about Advent, starting this just before Advent, is that Advent is like a mini Lent. It's this time of waiting and preparation for the coming of our Lord. We are able to very clearly meditate on the four last things. Our death our judgment, eternal gladness, which is heaven, or eternal damnation, which is hell. And in light of those four things, our death and our judgment being the first two things, we can start to look at 
How are we playing this game of life? How are we doing with regards to our eternal destination? Have we given it our best effort? Are we dropping the ball, particularly in our vocation? And what needs to change this upcoming year? Because if all we had was, let's say, the next 30 days, if that was it, I'm pretty sure we would begin to amend our life very quickly. And so we should think of it that way. And you know what? The next 30 days aren't even guaranteed. Heck, the rest of today isn't guaranteed. So why wouldn't we begin this exercise as soon as possible? Holy Mother Church understands in her infinite wisdom that we need to go through these seasons of preparation. And Advent being this mini sort of Lent, this mini sort of preparation for the coming of our Lord, we can use it as an opportunity to renew our lives, to amend our lives. So now we're going to segue and we're going to bring this goal setting and we're going to view it through the lens of the upcoming liturgical year. So let's get a bird's eye view of what the liturgical year looks like. It begins with the season of Advent, and then from Advent, we move into Christmastide. This will run all the way up to the Feast of the Epiphany, and then we have the time after Epiphany or Epiphany Tide. Following Epiphany Tide, we will go into Septuagesima. Septuagesima is the time prior to the season of Lent or our preparation for Lent, and Septuagesima is followed by the season of Lent. Lent will take us all the way to Easter Sunday, which then begins Eastertide, and Eastertide will take us all the way to Pentecost, which after begins the time after Pentecost. Time after Pentecost being the longest season, usually about six months, which will bring us back into the season of Advent. In the middle of all of these seasons, there are customs, traditions, devotions, novenas, holy days of obligation, feast days of saints, opportunities for plenary indulgences, etc., etc. And the question that I want to ask is, as we come to the end of time after Pentecost for this year, how many of those customs, traditions, devotions, novenas, etc., have we really taken advantage of what spiritual exercises have we embraced this past year to help us in our journey towards our eternal home? Because I am a husband and a father, I can speak very clearly to the husbands and fathers and in a little bit more removed way to the mothers and spouses of these husbands and fathers. And I can also speak because for a good portion of my life, I was a single Catholic. I could speak to those who are unmarried, who are maybe discerning a particular vocation, either the religious or the spiritual life. And the church puts this liturgical year in front of us to help us discern and to figure these things out so that we can live out our vocation to its fullest potential, so that we can become the saints that God, from his infinite wisdom, throughout all eternity, has destined for us to become. If you dive deeper into each one of these seasons, you can take a look at each month of the year and see that the month was dedicated to something in particular. For example, in the season of Advent, which usually runs through December, December is dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. January is dedicated to the Holy Name and the childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ. February is dedicated to the Holy Family. March is dedicated to St. Joseph, April is dedicated to the Blessed Sacrament, May is dedicated to our Blessed Mother, June is dedicated to the Sacred Heart, July is dedicated to the Precious Blood, August is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart, September is dedicated to the Seven Dolores of our Blessed Mother, October is dedicated to the Holy Rosary, and then November is dedicated to the Poor Souls in Purgatory. So if we're going to goal set, whether we're a husband or father, or a mother and spouse, whether we are a single, lay Catholic, a religious, or a priest, let's stop and ask ourselves three questions. Maybe four, but let's just start with these three. What worked? Stop and reflect on this past 
year. What customs, traditions, devotions, novenas, plenary indulgences, feast days did I take advantage of? What spiritual exercises did I take advantage of and what worked? What did I love the most about all of those things that I did? You want to do this with a notepad and a pen. You really do want to reflect, like really dive deep into your memory banks and start to pull out the things that really brought you joy, the things that were the most fruitful. Write them down. If you really want to get the most out of this exercise, I find it most fruitful when I go through this exercise in front of the Blessed Sacrament because I'm trusting that my Lord and my God who is before me will bring to my mind that which He found the most beautiful, which He found the most fruitful in me. The second question, what didn't work? What were the vices that I failed to root out? What were the customs or traditions that I should have participated in? What were the devotions or the novenas that I should have done? Did I pray my rosary every day? Did I make a morning offering every day? Did I do a nightly examine every day? Could have I done that every day? So what didn't work? Maybe you took on too much. Maybe you tried to do too much. And it just all came crashing down. And you were overwhelmed. But again, when you do this with a pen and piece of paper and you just close your eyes and you try to think back through your memory or you do it in front of the Blessed Sacrament, He will reveal to you those things where maybe you bit off more than you could chew or perhaps you didn't do what you could have done and you know it. And then finally, the third question would be, what am I going to do different? So I'll speak to the husbands and fathers because this is, you're just going to get a look into my own mind. I'm asking myself right now, where did I drop the ball? First and foremost, with my spouse, and then secondly, with my children. As the leader of the family, what I do or do not do when when it comes to the rosary or spiritual devotions or a number of other things, customs, or even just my eagerness to take things on, or my eagerness or lack of eagerness to take things on spiritually in the family, affects my wife's mental state and her spiritual life. It affects my children's mental state and their spiritual life. When I become aware of these things, I start amending them immediately because I want to get into the habit of fixing the things that I'm doing wrong. I do not want to wait to do this. I want to start practicing the habit of doing it. And so I'll give you an example. This year, halfway through the year, I noticed that my children, every one of them had a particular vice that they were struggling with of some kind. It might have been scrupulosity, it might have been obedience or something like that. And so what I decided to do was Every day, I was going to offer a rosary for that specific child so that they could combat their predominant fault and they could combat that vice and grow in strength in its opposite virtue. This was a goal that I set. Now, I want to do this for an entire year. So again, I'm not waiting for January 1st to start. I've started I feel like I'm in practice mode right now and I'm strengthening the muscles so that come January 1st, or I should say come December 3rd, the first Sunday of Advent, I am operating at full speed. I'm not trying to do this. I've built up the muscles necessary to do this every day going forward. And so whomever I notice is struggling, that's the child that day. And if no one is struggling in particular, I just go through my four children. Monday, I'm going to do Max. Tuesday, I'm going to do Fulton. Wednesday, I'm going to do Ben. Thursday, I'm going to do Gemma. Friday, I'm going to do my wife. And that's how you just work through it. I'm praying for the graces that they need, that God is asking me to intercede and obtain on their behalf. No one else is in this privileged position and is able to do this but me. And so, I would encourage you to look at what needs to change. 
This is just one example of what I've begun to change in my own life. But I'm asking myself the same questions. What customs, traditions, devotions, novenas, etc. do I want to embrace this year that I haven't taken advantage of? What spiritual exercises have I not done that I need to take on? Or what have I done that's too much that didn't work? So what needs to change? And I'm going to start doing it right now. So I gave you just one example of an area where I am doing my best to amend my life, specifically paying attention to the needs of my family. Let's take a look at another example. This past year, I've tried to look at all of the opportunities that I had to gain a plenary indulgence for myself or to give my family the opportunity to gain a plenary indulgence for themselves and, of course, for the holy souls in purgatory. And I looked at it and I said, you know what? There were several opportunities that I just missed because they weren't written down. They weren't part of my schedule. And this is the second thing that I want to draw your attention to is if it isn't written down, meaning if it isn't in your calendar, hopefully all of you have some type of calendar, your time is the most precious thing that you have. It's the greatest gift from God other than the Eucharist. It's because you have an opportunity to amend your life with the time that he is giving you. It's an opportunity for you to grow in holiness and to grow in grace and to grow in virtue. So in order to respect this gift from God, time, what do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is be very ruthless with how we spend it. We want to use it. And the truth is, our memories are not good enough to hold our entire calendar in our head. We need to have it on paper. So hopefully you have some type of calendar, a digital or a physical calendar. I'm a fan of using both. But you schedule these things. You put into the calendar when the plenary indulgences are going to take place. So I'm in the process of scheduling for every single month, and you can go online and find the list. In fact, I might even put a link in the show notes to all of the plenary indulgences that, be, that can be gained in an entire year. And you schedule those for the upcoming year. You put it in your calendar and you set a reminder for them the day before. This way, you can make sure that you are taking advantage of all of the opportunities to gain those plenary indulgences for you. You're giving that opportunity to your family. And then to the degree that you can obtain them for the poor souls in purgatory, you do so. Another area which I am fixing is this past year I realized there were name days for our children. So their namesake, the saint that they were named after, those feast days, were not always celebrated in our family. They were kind of an afterthought. And this is something that we've fallen away from doing. Normally, this is very important in our family traditions. And this past year, it just seemed like because I didn't have it scheduled in the calendar, we missed it. Or I kind of expected my wife to be on top of that. And the truth is, is if it's important to me, then I'm going to write it down and I'm going to take responsibility for it. And so that's what we're going to do this upcoming year is for all of my children. The feast day of their particular saint is going to be in the calendar and we're going to make as big of a deal, if not more. Because think about this. Yes, we can celebrate their birthday. But we can go further by honoring the saint they are named after by celebrating their feast day and asking for that saint's intercession to help our children, help ourselves, even if we're, we're honoring a saint that we're named after. We can ask for their intercession to help us combat our predominant fault while at the same time growing in grace and in virtue to the level of perfection that God has desired for us in this life. Now let's just go a little bit further and bring this back to the liturgical year. I looked at the liturgical year and I realized something. During the penitential parts of the year, the Septuagesimas or the Lent or the Advent, it's very easy to take on undertakings, sacrifices, mortifications for our own spiritual and physical good. But perhaps we could consider this upcoming liturgical year not only to do it for ourselves, but specifically to do it for somebody else, namely our spouse and our children. So attaching a particular uh, novena or a mortification or some type of sacrifice to a particular person. So every time I do not eat meat. I'm going to offer the spiritual benefits gained for the salvation and sanctification of my wife. Every time I 
do some sort of spiritual exercise that I've undertaken for Lent. I offer the spiritual benefits for my children, growing in grace and virtue and combating their predominant fault or vice. Now, this doesn't need to happen just during the penitential seasons. You might have a season in your own life where all your kids are sick, or you're sick, or your spouse is sick, and you're having to do more than you normally would, or you're getting less sleep, and you are just experiencing difficulty. A friend of mine whose young daughter, I think she's maybe four years old now, she ended up having some serious complications with her health and had to go in for heart surgery. And the minute that I found out about this, at the same time, it happened to be that I was feeling unwell and I was, I think I had strep throat and it was incredibly painful. And the minute that I found out what this girl and this family was going to have to go through in the next several days, I said to our Lord God, and let me offer this for this girl's successful surgery for the peace and comfort of her parents because they must be suffering tremendously. Let me take this on for them. So I offer my sufferings for the good of this family and particularly the success of the surgery for this little girl. I'm sure in your own life, you can think of many setbacks, many sufferings, many difficulties, many sicknesses, undertakings that God is permitting to happen in your life right now. They're sort of a mini Lent in a way, and it's part of the liturgical season. So if you're going to go through this, then suffer it joyfully and offer it for the good of your neighbor, for the good of your spouse or your family. And this is how we grow in holiness. This is how we fight the good fight. And even though we are putting our own spiritual good and need secondary to the spiritual good of others, by default, the second thing is accomplished. Now, to wrap this up, the reason why I said four questions is because sometimes there's going to be obstacles that are in the way of you accomplishing this. And we would do well to ask for our Lord and our Blessed Mother's help in identifying those obstacles so that we can remove them before we begin this journey. And this is why I like beginning in Advent, is because those things will manifest themselves, even if you don't figure it out ahead of time. But as they manifest, you can then remove the obstacles out of the way and continue to move forward. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. What has worked? What hasn't worked? What am I going to do different? And what are the obstacles so that I can get them out of the way and continue to move forward? Now, I could go on and on about the different things that I'm doing, but I just wanted to give you a few examples of how I am looking at this upcoming liturgical year. I did mention in the beginning that every season has customs, traditions, devotions, novenas, etc., and how every month is dedicated to some particular thing, either to the Immaculate Conception or to the Holy Family or to St. Joseph or the Blessed Sacrament. And so you could look at each month and go, I want to take on some kind of custom or devotion or tradition or novena in that particular month to honor St. Joseph or to honor our Blessed Mother or the Immaculate Heart or the Seven Sorrows of Mary, whatever the case may be. And you can take some of these things on for this upcoming year. It's not beyond your ability to do one devotion a month or one novena a month. I think everybody could do a little bit more because in the realm of the eternal, we should be doing more than we are. I think a lot of us are doing far less than we are capable of. I don't say that's everybody. I know there are some people that do far more than I do because they are capable, but all within our means, right? So if you have reflected this year on what has worked, keep the good. What hasn't worked, well, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Take all the stuff that didn't work and chuck it. And then what are you going to do different? So what are you going to take on? What are you going to drop? And be really critical with this and ask our Lord or our Blessed Mother to help you figure this out so that you are viewing your life from the lens of the liturgical year, and you set these goals. The purpose of your spiritual life, the purpose is to become a saint. That's the whole point of it. That's the why. That's why we have a spiritual life, is to grow in our relationship with God so we could spend all eternity with him. 
the what we need to do and the how we're going to do it becomes very simple if we need to grow in holiness. We use all of these beautiful gifts of Holy Mother Church that they have given us, these traditions, these customs, these devotions. We grow in our faith and our understanding. We take on spiritual readings. We take on spiritual exercises. Maybe we attend Mass once more during the week than we normally would. Or maybe we, if we're husband or father, we learn to serve at Mass for a weekday Mass in the morning. It could be anything. Or you serve in the choir. Whatever the case may be. But you view your life through this lens of the liturgical year. And you set some very specific goals so that you can say for sure, come next Advent, You have grown in grace and in virtue and in holiness. You and your family are glorifying God with your lives. Remember, if it isn't written down, then it isn't that important to you. Schedule it. Put it in your calendar. Set reminders for it. Where performance is measured, performance is improved. Well, there you have it, folks. I want to thank you all for tuning in to another episode, and I especially want to thank our patrons, especially our newest patron, Jenny, who joined us at the beginning of November. I want to pray for all of our Patreon members, because without them, I wouldn't be able to continue to produce content. I really do appreciate their financial support. And I want to pray for them, their family members, their intentions, and also for a few patrons who are going through some financial difficulty right now. I want to pray for all of them because, again, without them, we wouldn't be able to continue to produce content. So please join me in praying for all of them, their family members, and their intentions. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater nostr qui es in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat regnum tuum fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne nos inducas in tentationum, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis, peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. And also for all the holy souls in purgatory, we pray a requiem. Requiem eternum dona eis domine et lux perpetua luce et eis, fidelium anime per misericordiam dei, requiescant in pace. In nomine Patris et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So thanks again for tuning in, and until our next episode, may God love you and Our Lady keep you.